a pleasant day STEM learners. This is again Sir Peter, your pre-calculus teacher. For today's discussion, we will still talk about problems on conic sections. For the second part, we will know how to identify conic sections by inspection and transform the general equation of a given conic into its standard equation. Are you ready? Recall the general form of second degree equations. So all second degree equations has this form. But for conic sections, we omit bxy as part of the general form. So we only consider the x squared and the y squared that appears on the formulas. Notice the differences between the general form as discussed in the previous lesson. For the circle, both the x squared and the y squared appear, and their coefficient should be the same. So instead of making this one as ax squared plus cy squared, we made c as a because the x squared, the coefficient of x squared, and the coefficient of y squared are just the same, meaning a is equal to the c value. This is an example of a, an equation of a circle in general form. By inspection, look at the plus sign and look at the two similar coefficients. So an example is 18x squared plus 18y squared minus 24x plus 48y minus 5 is equal to 0. There are cases that the degenerate cases can be a point for an empty set. So if it doesn't take the form of a circle, then it is a point and an empty set. For the equation of the parabolas, we have exactly one of the x or y appears. So look at this one, ax squared. And in this part, we have cy squared only. So notice that only one of the squared part should be appearing. Examples, a, para a parabola which opens upward, we have 3x squared minus 12x plus 2y plus 26 equal to 0. So notice that it's only the x squared which appeared in the formula. In the same way, if only the y squared appear in the formula, this is still an equation of a parabola which opens to the right. Third, let's have the equation of the ellipse. Notice that both the x squared and the y squared appear, but a and c are unequal. They are both positive, okay? And since the operation is addition, okay? And our a value here is 2, our a value here is 5. So this is an example of a horizontal ellipse. Next, we have the given 4x squared plus y squared minus 16x minus 6y plus 21 is equal to 0. Again, notice that the coefficients are different. So we have 4 and 1, respectively. So if a and c are equal, then we will classify the conic as circle. However, if they are unequal, then the conic is un. Ellipse. So same with the circle, the degenerate cases are a point or a empty set, meaning there is no graph at all. For the equation of the hyperbola, both x squared and the y squared appear, but notice that their coefficients have different signs. Look at the first example, 5x squared minus y squared. So there is a difference. So you can easily identify the equation of a hyperbola. Same with here. We have negative and then positive for y squared. So both are examples of horizontal hyperbolas and vertical hyperbolas. Notice the degenerate cases. So if the hyperbola does not exist, therefore what exists are its asymptotes. So since 
given a uh, hyperbola, isn't it that the asymptotes are intersecting? That's why the degenerate cases could be two intersecting lines. Take note that in identifying a conic section by its standard equation, it is only after transforming a given general equation to its standard form in which we can identify whether it is a degenerate conic. For example, if you obtain an equation x squared plus y squared is equal to zero, then the radius does not exist. So therefore, it is a point. Now, if it is x squared plus y squared is equal to negative one, then it becomes an empty set. Therefore, the circle does not exist. If the degenerate conic in standard form, for example, you obtain this one, like um, x squared plus five minus y squared over seven is equal to negative one, then this just proves that it forms two intersecting lines, which is the equation of a hyperbola. So only when you transform them to its standard form, when you know whether they are degenerate or non-degenerate. So how do we transform a general form to its standard form? So to rewrite the equation of a conic in general form to its standard form, we will use the method completing the square. Remember completing the square? Say for example, x squared plus 6x. How do we complete this square? We get the half of the value of b, which is the coefficient of x. So 6 divided by 2, that is 3. And then you square it. So that becomes 9. Remember, the formula is b over 2 squared, Okay, getting the half and then squaring the answer. That is what you call completing the square. Let's take this one as an example. Let us rewrite the general form of this given equation into its standard form. Notice that by inspection, this is an equation of a parabola. Do you agree? So this parabola might open upward or downward. So for the first step, we separate the y part and the x part. So on the left side, we'll have the x part. On the right side, we transpose y and positive one will become negative one. In this example, we can now complete the square on the x part. So we have x squared plus 4x, completing the square, get half of 4, so that it's 2, and then square 2, we have 4. And since we added 4 here, we should also add 4 onto the other side because we are performing addition property of equality. Next is we rewrite this one as a binomial factor. So the square of the binomial will be the quantity x plus 2 squared is equal to y minus 1 plus 4 is y plus 3. So this is now the standard equation of the parabola, which opens upward. Notice that the vertex is located at negative 2 negative three, given these values. And the C value is one fourth, since the coefficient here is one, but we don't need to write it anymore. So the C distance is one fourth, and lattice rectum is one. The vertex is at negative two, negative three. Let's have another example. 
Let us rewrite the general form of this given equation of hyperbola. By inspection, this equation is a hyperbola because of the minus sign. So first is we group the x parts and the y parts. So we have 4y squared plus 8y. So this is our first group. Minus the quantity 9x squared plus 54x. Notice that I made 9 and 54 positive because when you check their signs, negative times 9x squared is still negative 9x squared. The negative times 54x is still negative 54. So I did not change the equation. I simply rewrite it inside the parentheses by regrouping. And then the constant term negative 81, which is our f value, will be on the other side. So that is 81. Next step is I cannot perform the process of completing the square, not unless I factor out the factors of y squared and x squared, respectively. So we will remove them by getting the common monomial factor. So we have 4 y squared plus 2y. So you simply divide 4y squared divided by 4 is y squared. 8y divided by 4 is 2y. Now I can now complete the square. The half of 2, so that is 1 times 1. You square it, so that is 1. Minus 9 times the quantity x squared. So 9x squared divided by 9 is x squared. 54x divided by 9 will be positive 6x. Next, we perform completing the square here. So we get half of 6. That is um, 3. Then square it. So that is 9. It's equal to 81. Then multiply 4 and 1 by applying APE. So we have positive 4. Positive 4. Then multiply negative 9 times positive 9. That is negative 81. We can now cancel 81 and negative 81. So what will remain is 4. Then I will be rewriting this one as a binomial factors, which is y, the quantity y plus 1 squared minus 9. The quantity, so as a binomial factor, this is x plus 3 squared is equal to 4. Dividing both sides by 4. So we will get now the standard equation, which is 4 times the quantity y plus 1 squared over 1. So even if you do not write it, but I will rewrite it for the sake that we could have a value for a minus x plus 3 squared over. So we write this one as 4 over 9. So instead of 9 over 4, we get the reciprocal. So that is 4 over 9. So when we graph this one, a is equal to 1, b is equal to 2 thirds. Okay, so I simply got the square root of this one and this one. So even if you do not write 1 here, that would do. So this could still be the standard equation. That is 4 times the quantity y plus 1 squared minus the quantity x plus 3 squared over 4 over 9 is equal to 1. Now let us identify the center of the hyperbola. The center is at, so we get first the x value. H, H value is um, negative 3. And in here we have 1. So if I remove 4, then you should also remove 
also 4 here. So the final answer is the quantity y plus 1 squared minus the quantity x plus 3 squared over 4 over 9 is equal to 1. I missed that part here because we already divided by divided by um, 4 and 4 respectively. So did you learn something? For our next video lesson, we are still on week number five. We will now solve more problems on conic sections involving situational problems. Did you learn something? Here are the references used in this presentation. Again, this is Sir Peter, your pre-calculus teacher.